Hi, I'm Michael Valenti, and uh, welcome to my cycling art studio. Today, I am going to give you some tips um, on drawing basic shadows and some simple perspective. And these are things that you can use in any of the drawings that you do. Uh, whether you're a beginner or an expert, um, these are the kinds of tips that can help. I always start with my little cardboard frame down here on my watercolor paper so that I have an outline very lightly in pencil. I do that so that my artwork that I create stays inside the pencil line and doesn't run off the paper. So what I want to do is I want to start with, I'm going to put a circle up here, okay? And this is just a circle and I'm going to put uh, a couple little marks on it. That's our sun, okay? For today's drawing lesson. That's our sun. And then on this page, I'm going to draw a couple of basic shapes so that we can then take those shapes and figure out where the shadows go. So right here near the sun, I'm going to take and I'm going to put a square. Over here, I'm going to put big, tall rectangle. Okay, like that, very light. And then over here, I'm gonna put a circle. All right? So now from these different shapes, we'll figure out where the shadows are gonna fall and how to build these shapes. But before we can do that, I wanna add some dimension, okay? So the dimension I wanna to add to this just is strictly to show you how We can turn a square into a cube and 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 so th th if we did this the there's a thing called horizon line but it would be way up here but that is one shape this i'm going to take this and i'm going to take it down here like this and here like this so that's a little bit different you can see this one has three sides i get a top a side and a side here i only can see two sides which means the top is up here and the bottom is underneath, but I can't see them. And then the circle, we're going to leave it just as a circle because the circle is a circle. It's a sphere. Um, now, when the sun comes and it hits something, and, and since this is just my outlines, I'm going to show you the sun's rays or a light or a lamp or whatever, and it hits things, it goes like this, okay? It kind of stretches out along those ways. From those from that direction, we get our shadows. So now I'm gonna take my little Sharpie pen and draw this a little darker so that you can see it. Here's my cube, all right? My first cube. I'm just gonna rough that first cube in. Now here's my circle. I have my circle. And here I have my tall rectangle, which I've put a side on. It goes like this. Now that feels different than that, and you'll see why in a minute. And I've done it on purpose. Here, I'll put the sun in here, just so that we can remember that it's up there. It doesn't have to be in your drawing, because this is just a work in drawing anyway. Again, remember this is part of a tips that you can use no matter what you're drawing. And now I take my little kneaded eraser. I get rid of the light pencil lines that I used as guidelines before I go and paint. Now the painting today is really just about, where's my little, oh, here it is. I have my half pan, um, my half pan watercolor paints and I have my water brush and a little rag that I can use to um, dab my brush and control the water on my brush. So now I'm only gonna make, I'm gonna make gray. 
kind of a bluish gray, all right? Just so that we can use it as a way to demonstrate what shadows do and how it affects things. So that color right there is much too dark for me to start with. So I'm gonna go with this lighter color, see? And that's why I use this little pad on the side. I can see what I'm doing. So to, very, to begin with, I'm gonna put this light blue on top of my first block, my first cube. I'm gonna do the same thing on part of my ball here, my circle. Now notice I left that part right through here on the sphere. I left it light. I didn't put any paint on it because that's where the sunlight's hitting it the most. Now on this one, I can make it pretty much any color I want. I'm gonna take a lot of water and I'm gonna push it all the way down, okay? And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Now, I'm gonna go back to my blue paint and I'm gonna to look to make it a little bit darker, okay? I'm gonna make it a little bit darker because I'm gonna start sneaking up here on my colors. Now, here we go. The front part of the cube is this blue. See? So if you look at that, you now start seeing that the top is lighter than the sides. And that's because the sunlight's hitting the top first and then the side second. Same thing would start to happen over here on your sphere. The sunlight would start hitting the top before it hits the next sides. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a little bit of water and pull that out, okay? Smooth that down just a little bit. So now it starts to feel more like a ball. I'm gonna leave this one alone. Now, I'm gonna to go to my paints one more time and go even darker. Again, I'm doing this so that we can see how sunlight affects these different shapes. And really, if you think about it, sunlight affects these different shapes and then you can use this same technique, the same thinking on anything you draw. And last here, we'll put a little bit of darkness all the way down here. Now, one of the reasons why I then blot out and soften it is because it's a ball, it's a sphere, I want it to feel round. There's no hard edges to it. I'm now gonna take my darkest color and I'm gonna fill in my last shape, okay? So now you can see that all of these have a light side and a dark side, a light side and a dark side, a light side and a dark side. So where do the shadows come? The shadows are gonna go on the ground. So in this particular one, the sunlight goes this way. That means the shadow is gonna go this way. And the shadow is going to be on two sides. And on this, the shadow is going to come down this way and be underneath this ball and out around this way. So now that ball is throwing a shadow on the ground. And in the last one, the shadow since you only see in two sides, is really gonna be directly 
this way. Boom, boom, right across. See? So that looks very different than the others. And you can change how you or where you want to place the shadow. Um, this shadow, I could have brought it down this way if I want to really stay true to where that sun was, but I didn't because I, I wanted to have one side light side, one side dark side. So those are our basic shapes, and that's the basic shadows that happen when you create those shapes. To take this one step further, and I'll show you, let's take our hair dryer and dry this a little bit. Okay, our, we've drawn our three basic shapes, and we've put a shadow on each of them because the sun is up here, it's lighter and then darker on the other sides. It's lighter here and it's darker on the other sides. It's light on this side, it's dark on that side. So these are three basic blocks that realistically in your drawings could be anything you want them to be. So when you're drawing something and you start going, oh, I don't know, uh, I think I'm gonna draw um, a, a soccer ball. All right, so if you're gonna draw a soccer ball, right, you have to, first of all, think about where's the sun going to come from? Where's the light on the soccer ball? Because you want the soccer ball, and I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm kind of doing it right, but I don't have one in front of me, so I'm not really sure. So don't beat me up on that, but you'll get the idea. So what starts to happen is you start getting the feeling that this is a soccer ball that is round. And it actually feels round because the sun and the shadows give it dimension. And that's like that next layer of your drawing is that you start to create dimensions and layers and shadows in your drawings. And that starts to help make things feel just a little bit more real. So there you go. There's my soccer ball. And let's see, what could this be? Hmm, pretty much anything we want. Let's start here and make this a box. So now I've taken the cube that we drew and I have given it a top and really that top would actually have a little bit of a shadow like that too that would add something and in my box I think I'm gonna make a hole in my box now if I do that that means it's going to be very dark inside there right so I've got to get in there now and just really fill it in. But now I've got a cube that has turned into a box that's got a hole in it. And we'll let that dry and we'll see what goes from there. The big tall rectangle I don't know. I think I know what it looks like. I think it looks like a very tall building. So no matter what you draw, if you understand the basic shape and you understand where the shadow goes on that basic shape, you can draw anything, pretty much. There you go. So now you have a building. <laughs> Probably have some more windows over here. And that's how it works.
Let's see, what do we need here for our, we need some grass. There we go. And I think since our soccer ball has been sitting out here for a little while, I think we need an inchworm. There we go. And I think our box here, hmm, probably need a hole on the top too. So let's put a hole in the top. And again, you're just using darks and lights to create the shapes and the shadows that create dimension. And you can use that in all of your drawings, whether you're drawing a face or a bicycle or a tree or a house. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. That's it for today. Thanks for painting with me. I will see you next time. Ciao.